Several years ago, I traveled to the country of Kenya in Africa. I was about 20 or 21 years old, and I had never seen such poverty before in my life. Um, the guy that was taking me around took me to one of the largest slums in all of Africa. And when I got there, it, it completely broke my heart to see how these people were living. Um, I, I'd never seen anything like it. I had no idea what to do. I had no idea how I could help. I mean, I was just a young guy and, and had nothing to offer, really. I was in college. I didn't have money. I didn't have uh, very many talents to be able to give. And, and so I really had no idea what I was doing there and what I could do to help in this situation. As they were taking me through the slums, they began to tell me stories of different things that would happen in, in this part of the world. And as I got there, they, they began to say that every time that it rains, sewage would rise up in the streets and flood through the people's homes. And the, the homes that they were living in were, were these little, uh, almost boxes, um, made out of cardboard or, or tin. And then we walked up to this one house, and it had just been built. It was actually really well done. It wasn't huge or anything, but for this area, it was really nice. And so I asked the, the pastor that was leading me through, well, what's, what's the story with this house? And the guy said, oh, let me, Josh, let me tell you about this. There was a, a, a group of people from America that came, and they built this house for this young woman. And I said, well, what's the young woman's story? And the pastor went on to tell me that uh, a few years prior to this, this young woman who was mentally handicapped, mentally challenged, she was raped by several men in the community. And she bore a child from that rape. And now this young woman by herself is raising a little three-year-old girl. And so they were telling me all of this. It, it, again, it, it broke my heart to see the situation. We stepped into this house that had been built by people loving her and caring for her and, and they wanted to make sure that she could be safe and lock her door at night. And as I walked into this one room house, basically, this little girl, the three year old girl that the pastor just told me about, she ran up to me with her arms up. She didn't meet, she never met me before. I was just some white guy from America. And she saw me and ran to me and, and I picked her up in, in my arms and I began to play with her. All she had on was a diaper. And, and the moment I put her in my arms, I realized pretty quickly that uh, her diaper had not been changed in quite some time. <laughs> it, it leaked everywhere. I mean, it was like a urine bomb that just exploded all over me. And it got all over my shirt, all over my clothes. I, I honestly, at the point, I didn't know what to do. And in my flesh, what I would have normally done as a young guy like that would have pushed the girl away from me and sat her down and cleaned myself up. But that day, God did something in my heart that I can't explain. It wasn't because of the good guy that I was, because I wasn't. It wasn't because of the love in my heart, because honestly, at that point in my life, I really didn't have much. God moved and he changed me. And all I could do was hold that girl tighter I played with her, I, I kissed her head, we put her down, I, I, I played with her, we, we prayed for the family. We were only there maybe 10 or 15 minutes. They cleaned up the girl, we walked out of the house, and as I stepped back out into the slums, God spoke to me. Now, it, when I say that, I don't want you to think that, you know, there was some light from heaven, uh, and, and all of a sudden God's voice booms down, Josh, Josh, it, it was nothing like that. But deep in my soul, I knew what God was saying to me. And this is what I heard deep in here. He said to me, Josh, you're just like this little girl. I didn't get it. I, what do you mean, God? I'm, I'm like this little girl. He said, Josh, you are, <laughs> you are so dirty. You have horrible things kicked on you, way worse than urine or way worse than sewage. You, you have so much sin caked on your life. And at that point, absolutely, I did. I, I mean, I still do. I'm still a, a sinful man. And at that point, I, was, I had so much stuff caked on me, so much sin caked on me. But this is what God said. He said, Josh, you're just like this little girl. Yes, you're dirty. Yes, you're caked with sin. But when you run to me, Josh, like that little girl ran to you, and you put your arms up, I pick you up and I hold you anyway. And Josh, instead of you making me dirty, 
I make you clean. You see, that's the good news of the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus. That's why he came. He came for sinful, broken, dirty people like you and me who have so much sin and brokenness caked on us. We have broken lives and broken marriages and broken relationships, but our God loves us anyway. And that's why Jesus came to this earth. He came so that we could run to him with our arms up like that little girl and he would throw us in his arms and clean us off and love us anyway. So I don't know what's going on in your life right now. I don't know where you're sitting, in front of a TV or in front of a computer screen or on a cell phone. But here's what I know, that God's arm is not too short to save. If you put your arms up right now, just like that little girl and just like me, and raise them up to the Father, raise them up to Jesus, he will pick you up and clean you off. He will forgive all of your sins. That's why Jesus died on the cross, is to forgive us and to cleanse us and to set us free. And so wherever you're at right now, I wanna, I wanna ask you, I wanna plead with you to cry out to the Father that saves, cry out to the God who saves, cry out to Jesus that will cleanse you and set you free. His forgiveness is for you, his forgiveness is for me. It doesn't matter what family you come from, what background you're at, wh wherever you've come from in your life, this forgiveness and cleansing is for you and for me. And so today, would you bow your head with me and let's pray to the Father who cleanses us. Father, right now, whoever's watching this, all of us, we bow our hearts before you and we thank you that you are a God who saves. We thank you that like that little girl, we can run to you with our arms up and you hold us and clean us off and we never make you dirty, but you make us clean. We can clean all of our body with soap and shampoo, but only you can clean our souls. Only you can clean our hearts. And so today, we pray, Father, that you would clean us off, forgive us of our sins like you promise, and give us a new purpose in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness, and thank you for cleansing us and setting us free. We pray this in Jesus' name.